Have you ever wanted a single dashboard that pulls together all of your business data from various sources and presents it back to you as a nice series of charts? If so, this video is for you. I'm going to be showing how you can leverage Notion charts with a make automation that's going to let you pull in data from sources like Google Analytics, YouTube Studio, Stripe, Shopify, wherever it is that you're collecting your business data. This automation will let you pull that data into a Notion database, present it as a chart and customize it however you like. I'll also be showing how you can set up an automation that auto updates every day with fresh data, as well as showing you how you can backfill the last 12 months of data so that your charts aren't starting empty and you can actually look through your historical data as well. So this will be a slightly more advanced tutorial. But by the end of it, you should have the skills and the tools you need to set up your own business reporting directly in Notion and track the metrics that you want across various sources. Let's get started. So this is what we're going to be building, a chart which looks something like this, which is going to be pulling in data from Google Analytics 4 using a make integration that looks like this. I'm gonna be using Business OS to host this data and to build my dashboard. So Business OS is a, an all-in-one hub for running your business in Notion. There's everything from tracking your projects, content, people, calendar, offerings, and there is this KPIs dashboard, which I'm going to be using. And if you're a Business OS user already, this is going to be really helpful to show you how you can link these charts to your real-time data. But let's start from scratch. This is what we'll be building, but in order to add a new KPI in the dashboard, all you need to do is create a new chart database. In Business OS, that's as simple as clicking this new KPI button and then dragging it into the dashboard. But if you are building this from scratch, what you'll need to do is type chart, let's do a new vertical bar chart, new chart, and that's going to give you a blank database, which is going to be completely empty edit the view, show the data, database title, and let's just say GA4 data. So this would be your chart and you can work accordingly. I'm going to work with the pre-filled business OS KPI template, and we're gonna be working with this data here. So the first step is we need a database for our chart. And the second step is actually going to be to head over to make and start building our scenario. So this is the scenario that we're going to be building, but let's start it from scratch so that you can follow along from the beginning. So you can do all of this with a free make plan. If you haven't already made an account, head over to make.com and sign up. It's very simple to get started. The first piece that we're gonna do after we create a new scenario, we're gonna search for Google Analytics. We'll see Google Analytics 4 here. And what we need to do is generate a report. So that's the first suggested module and what you will need to do is you'll need to connect to your Google Analytics account and the second thing you'll need they'll ask you to do is to input your property ID. So you can either find your analytics property ID up here in the URL or if you head over to admin then you can find your property details and at the top right, you'll find your property ID, copy this over and just add that in. It'll then ask you to lot to authenticate using Google login. And that's just gonna let make authorize and connect to your Google property. So once we have that connected, let's run a test run with yesterday's data. So I'm gonna choose yesterday as the date range and the dimension that we want. We only want one dimension for this particular report. It's going to be the date. The things that we actually want to be pulling from this are metrics. So the metrics that we want, we can choose anything from add to cart, bounce rate, checkouts, total users, and let's stick with that for now. So just to step back, what's going to happen is Google is going to generate a report, which is going to include these metrics for the given date yesterday. So it's going to give us a series of values for each of those metrics for yesterday's data. And what we need to do is map those properties into our Notion database. So 
Let's just continue with this. Limit 1000, that's fine, since we're only doing one day of reports. Okay, now we're going to add another module, and this one is going to be our Notion account. So let's look for Notion. And the action or the module that we're going to be doing is creating a database item. So if this doesn't show up here, just search for database item and then create a database item. Again, you'll need to connect to Notion. Now this is going to be a little bit more involved if you've never done this before in Notion. What you need to do is click add. You're going to choose probably Notion internal. Give it a name. So let's say my landmark connection. And what you need is this internal integration token. So to get that token, what you need to do is you need to go to your settings. You'll need to go down to connections. And if you don't have any of these connections already made, if you haven't already made an internal integration token, head over to develop or manage integrations. There will be some resources and tutorial for how to quickly just create your internal token. And once you do that, once you head back to connections, you'll see a token here. So for me, I have this landmark token. If I click this, then I can copy the token and then I can add it in here. And that's going to be the way that I connect. But there's one more step that you need to do in order for this to work. And that is going to be to give access to this token, basically, which you could think of as a user that has access to various views in your Notion workspace. That token doesn't have access to all the pages by default. What you'll need to do is head to the page which has the database. So in this case, all the databases of the KPIs are on this page here. Go to the top right corner. And what you need to do is connections. You need to just connect to and then select your integration token here. I've already connected the landmark token, which will now allow make to make changes in this database. So hopefully you're following along with that. If you have questions, do leave me a comment and I'm happy to help. But that's how you set up your connection. And now we have this internal connection token here. Then we need our database ID. I'm going to enter this manually just to make sure that we have the right one. In order to get your database ID, what we're going to do is go to our database view. This is our actual database here. We're going to click on this option and then we're going to go down to copy link to data. Now there might be a better way to do this, but this I can all do on the same page. So that's fine. I'm going to paste that link here. And then what I have is a string of numbers which follows the name of my workspace. So this bit here is the bit that you need to copy. And that's the unique database ID for this particular database. <clears throat> so that's what we need. I'm going to paste that here. And now we have a way for Make to actually go into the correct database and start creating items based on this Google report that we're generating. So what do we want to include in that database item that we're adding? The first thing we'll need to do is configure our database to have the right names or fields that are going to match our Google report. So time for me to edit this database. It's not just going to be some random new KPI. This is going to be GA4 data. And let's just do business OS test. Now what I'm going to do is just delete any of this dummy data since we don't actually need it for now. And I'm going to start editing the properties. So what I do is set the name, which is actually the title, uh, the title property in this database. I'm just going to call it timestamp. And now we can add values for all of the things that we're interested in. So let's just say sessions. I'm going to add another one of these here and another one and another one. Let's do add to cart. Let's do total users. Let's just do new users. We're also going to keep this period property here, which is what we're going to use for our chart. 
And for business OS users, you don't actually need this target if you don't want it. Okay, so now we have our properties configured to be able to collect the data that we're going to pull in from our Google report. Now we just need to map these fields onto these field items here. So let's start with our timestamp, which is the title property in our database, add item. The key is timestamp, so that's just the name of the property. The value, this is an important one to get. If it's your title property, it's not actually text. You need to select title as the value type. And the value, for me, I'm just going to do this date property from our Google report, which is going to be just basically a timestamp of the report. Okay, so that's our title. Next, we have our sessions. So, key is going to be sessions. The value is going to be a number. And the value itself, we're going to pull from sessions. So since Google Analytics has a lot of properties, you can use this search bar to filter the, the properties that you want to pull. And we've got our sessions value here. I'm going to repeat that for each of these properties that we're interested in. So add to cart. Add a so a quick note, this one is capitalized. This one is not. The thing that you need to make sure matches is the key here and the property here. So if you spelt it like this in Notion, just make sure you spell it like that here in your key. And now there is one more very important piece, which I'm going to show you, which is the period. So what we want is to have not just a text based timestamp. We want a date property that's going to let us make use of Notion's chart functionalities by grouping things by week, by month and days. And so what we actually need is a date property that is formatted correctly. So here in make, what I need to do is create another field for period. I need to select the date type. And now it's going to prompt me with a start time and an end time. All I'm going to do is get the date of the report and use that for both the start time and the end time. So that's just going to show me the values for that period for one day. All right, so this is now configured. I'm just going to check that all of the metrics that I've included in my report are actually being pulled from this. So I think I didn't include new users. So let's add new users to this. Sessions, total users. All right, that's all there. Okay. And now let's give this a test run and see what happens. Run once. Okay, it has successfully run the scenario. Let's head over to Notion. And you can see that we now have this new object, which has a timestamp. It has the number of sessions, number of add to carts, total users, new users, and the period is yesterday. So that's our data. That's our report that was run to capture all of these values that we're interested in for yesterday. So if you wanted to set this up on a timer, you could run this every single day and then in the background automatically every day it's going to run this report. It's going to check how many users, checkouts, add to cards, whatever it is that you're interested in were captured yesterday. And if you just set that to run every single day, then every day you'll get a new value updated automatically and your chart will also update. So the interview, run the scenario at regular intervals. Let's just do every day and you can even set the time. So Google Analytics reporting, sometimes it's a bit delayed. So I would actually set this to the afternoon, something like four, maybe 4.30 PM when all the data is definitely in for yesterday. Okay. And that's now set up. What I need to do is go back to the scenario, save the changes, definitely save the changes and turn this on so that every day it's going to create that report for me. So the reason I haven't gone into the chart yet is because I want to actually show you how to populate this data with some historic data, as you can see in this example chart here. So what we need to do, I'm going to turn it off, head back into our make automation. And what I'm going to do is add a tool, which is going to be called a repeater. 
So let's drag this to the front. And basically what this is going to let us do is loop through and repeat this setup that we've created as many times as we like. In our case, we would like to repeat this report creation thing. Let's just say 365 times to give us a report for every single day from the last year. So how do we do that? First of all, click into this repeater. This value is going to be a number that iterates or increments one, two, three, four, five, every single time that it runs through. So the first time it goes through the loop, the value of this thing, which is going to be called I, is going to be one. When it goes through the next time, the value is going to be two and so on until we hit our repeat maximum. And in this case, we're going to repeat it 365 times. Actually, okay, let's not do it just yet because that's probably too much. Let's just start with 10 for this sample data. All right, that's all we need to do for the repeater. Okay. But how is Google going to know what one, two, three, four, five, six means? And how does it know that we want to subtract a day from the report every single time? Well, we need to click into our Google Analytics module. And what we need to do is change this yesterday date range to be a formula. So instead of asking Google Analytics for yesterday's data, we're going to ask it for a custom date range. We're going to add an item here. And what we need to do is you can just follow along with this formula. We need to click in and head over to this date, these date options here. We're going to do add days. And then you can see it gives me these blank values on either side of the semicolon. This value here is now. And the value at the end is going to be negative. And then we need to go back to our star value here. This I is what I was saying is that repeater number is going to be going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every time it goes through, this I is going to have a number. And so let me just close all of this and explain what we've got here is basically we're telling Google to create a report for now minus one day. Go through now minus two days, now minus three days. And by doing that, we effectively get a new report generated for every single day for, in this case, the last 10 days. The start date and the end date should be the same. So I'm just going to copy that whole formula and let's see how that goes for us now. So what should happen is when I run this, I should see 10 new items show up in here, which are each incrementally going back one day in the data that they're pulling for me. So let's run it once. You can see that these numbers are updating for each time it iterates through. So we've got five now, six. And if I head back, I can see this data is updating in real time with the correct dates and the values for each of those days. So I've just done it for 10 items, which basically gives me the last 10 days worth of data. But I could do this, as I said, for 365 days or the last 50 days. And that's going to let me backfill data so that I can actually work with a bit more in my charts from day one, basically. So let's delete this for now so that we don't have any duplicate options. I'm actually going to run this with 50 days worth of data, and then we can look into working with our charts. All right, so I actually stopped it at about like 33 days, but that's enough for us to work with for now. Now we have all of our data, which is real data being pulled from Google Analytics. And now we can start creating charts based on all of these properties and their data for each period. So let's go to the chart and let's just create a simple line chart for the sessions for each day across the last 30 days. Click into my style option, into my chart options here. What to show? We are going to choose the period and we're going to choose the day. And what we're showing on the y axis is going to be the sessions sum. 
Sometimes you may need to refresh the page as the data may not have properly loaded and Notion charts doesn't always load it right away. But here we have our chart, which has been plotted, which is plotting our sessions last 30 days, roughly. If you want to plot a different variable, I would recommend duplicating the chart view that you just did. Let's show instead maybe the new users. You can show this one as a bar chart and we can rename this as new users for the last 30 days. So it's worth noting that both of these charts are pulling data from the same database because we have all of this information uh, within this database. We can create a chart for new users, for sessions, for add to carts, and we can just create those as views in our dashboard. Now that we have the data for the last 30 days, we can even group it based on weeks. So instead of the period day, we could do it week by week. And what we're going to show is the total sessions. And once you have enough historical data, you can even create month by month or year by year data. And the really cool thing is that this automation can be applied and swapped out with any of the common business reporting tools that you're using. So instead of Google Analytics, you could replace this with YouTube Studio Analytics or Stripe metrics or Shopify data, work through the same steps of mapping the properties into a unique database. So you might create another KPI for, I don't know, monthly revenue from Stripe. Set the fields to include whatever you want from the Stripe report and then set up your automation to run either the repeater to fill your, to backfill your data, or once you're done with that, we can delete this repeater, delete anyway, and we can set this up to run every day. And if you do remove the repeater, just remember to change your date range instead of custom, to flip it back to yesterday so that when it runs this automation every day, we're going to be getting yesterday's data and putting it into our Notion database. And so that's it. Now you have your very own custom dashboards that you can build, which are going to pull in data on an automation from Make. You can do this for whatever metrics you have access to and connect through Make. And once you have that data in Notion, you can create your own visualizations to track any of these metrics filtered and styled however you like. Again, just to mention, I'm using Business OS to host all of these KPIs, which is just going to speed up the process for me in creating this dashboard, as well as being able to quickly reference it in my main business hub. If you're interested in Business OS, you can find a link below in the description. But the same logic applies for any charts that you have, any databases where you want to create chart views. You can follow these steps and start setting up your very own custom business reporting dashboards in Notion. Thanks for watching.